Hey everybody, in this video we're going to build a 486 or hashtag 486 build off. What you see in front of you is a pile of parts. I've got a mini tower case, a motherboard, a CPU, a sound card, a couple of video cards, CD-ROM drive, floppy drive, memory, a big jar of screws. Sit back, relax, and watch me build a 486 or hashtag 486 build off. Let's do it. To get this build going, the first thing I needed was a mini tower case, which you see here is a mini tower case, but I had some requirements that I wanted in finding a mini tower case. One of the biggest was having a segmented display, which this case actually has one in this area right here. Got a reset button, turbo button, keyboard lock, hard drive LED, turbo on or off LED, power LED, power switch, two five and a quarter bays, two three and a half inch bays. Sadly, I don't have a blank for here or any blanks for down here, but this is okay because I'm gonna put a CD-ROM drive up here. I will be putting a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive here, but I'm still gonna have a hole down here. But hopefully by the end of this video, I will have that resolved and I will have something in that space, whether it be some sort of zip drive, jazz drive, a blank, we will find out. This case actually came from a friend of mine, Ian, Tales of Weird Stuff on YouTube. So thank you, Ian, for this case. And uh, what else? I've cleaned it up already off camera. I've posted pictures on my Instagram and also on Twitter. So you've probably seen this progress as it's been going along. But anyways, enough with the jibber jabber. I'm gonna open up this case and get ready to put in the motherboard. I figured I should show the back of the case before I open it up. So here's the back of the case. Here's the power supply. Keyboard will go here. We got our slots. And there are four screws holding on this lid. There's one, two, three, and four. So yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and open this case and move on with the build. Here is a side view of the case with the lid off. You can see the power supply, all the power cables, and all the other cables for like the speaker and for the turbo reset, etc. So I just wanted to show the inside of this case. This is just kind of hanging out here. We may or may not be using this that was still in the case. Um, it's nice and clean inside. As you can see, originally there was a 386SX in this case. And that was part of the deal getting it from my friend Ian was... I could have the case, but I had to pull all the parts out of it, which was basically a motherboard and a floppy drive. Um, but I have all that stuff. So yeah, all right, back to the build. We are currently in handheld mode. I wanted to show you the motherboard that I'm working with here. It's a, just a generic motherboard. It's got cache memory, a couple of VLB slots, ISO slots. Got some memory, etc. And right now, let's turn this around. It currently has a Intel 486-33 processor. And we're gonna be swapping that out with a 486-DX266. I've got that right here, check that out. Intel 486-DX266. So in the next clip, you're gonna see the processor swapped out. And just like that, with the magic of editing, the processor has been swapped. It is now a 486DX266, just a drop-in replacement. Here is the original processor that will go into my parts bin. And yeah, what else can I show you on this board? Uh, it's got the uh, AMI BIOS, 486DX ISO BIOS from 1993. And it's one of the things with this build is I'm wanting to build a period correct 486 and the DX266 processor seems to be the sweet spot for DOS and Windows games of the era. On this board, it has got four 
30 pin SIM slots and it's got two 72 pin slots. I'm not 100% sure how much memory is on this board. I had it in my my stash and we'll we'll find out together once we power this thing up. Oh and also yeah the uh, CMOS battery has been replaced with a modern CR2032 IKEA battery. Not a sponsored video but IKEA has got cheap coin cell batteries. All right next we are going to remove this back panel here. This folds down and we will get the motherboard mounted and continue on with the build. One more shot in handheld mode. As you can see, I got the motherboard mounted. I had standoffs for most of the corners, but here in the back, there were no standoffs. So I had to go into my box of little sticky feet and we'll get down here low and you can see under there, like right there and in the middle and down here. And I even put a couple under here to make the board kind of sturdy when, you know, cards and stuff are pushing on. So yeah. Good pro tip, get some little rubber sticky feet. And I use these for cases and things that don't have feet or in this case, making the motherboard nice and secure. All right, we're gonna get this in the case. So I'm just building along here and forgot that I needed to record some footage. So I'm gonna show you where we're at right now. I'm not gonna take it all apart and redo it on camera, but basically I got the, uh, the power hooked up. You can see that right here. You always want to make sure the two blacks are in the middle for the ground. I have got my TIAC. You can see it right there. My TIAC 1.44 floppy drive mounted. I got screws here, two screws, and I have two screws on the other side. No cheating there. And next I'm going to probably get the CD-ROM drive in there and then start connecting up the wires down here. Get my hand out of the way you can see right there where you've got like all the LEDs and functions and stuff with all of these wires that are right here. And in the last clip I showed you, you know, I put some feet under the motherboard. Well, I also added some here to the bottom of the case because the bottom of the case didn't have any feet. Now it's got feet. All right, getting back to it. I have finished wiring up the case to the motherboard. Things like the turbo button reset, turbo switch, the segmented display, etc. So I wanted to switch gears for a moment and show you some of the components that are going to go inside my machine. What you see here is an IDE CD-ROM drive, and it is made by TIAC. See that there, TIAC? The IDE interface on the back. You will also notice right here we've got April of 2000 for the manufacturer date. I wanted to do a period correct build, you know, 1990s build, but trying to find a 1990s era CD-ROM drive, like a 2X or a 4X speed, they're kind of pricey on eBay in 2022, and I just didn't want to do that, especially for something not guaranteed to work. So this was a compromise. And the reason why I went with this drive, one, TIAC, it's a good brand, but two, if you look at the front, there is no branding of what the speed is on this drive. You know, a lot of the newer drives will say, you know, 24X, 52X, whatever. This says nothing. And to me, this has a 90s feel to it. So that's why I went with this, because of the look and feel. And also because it was a TIAC branded drive, and I've had very good experience with TIAC floppy drives as well as CD-ROM drives. So that's why I went with that. Let me grab the next component. The next component is a video card. Gotta have a video card. So here we go. This is a VLB bus video card. I believe it has either one or two megabytes of memory. We will find out when we plug it in. This is a Serious Logic video card. I'll bring it up close there. The uh, CLGD5428. And if I recall, this is, yeah, we got a part number up here WG-1000VL slash 4 Rev A. And again, if you look at the chip here, the Serious Logic chip. You'll see it's got a date code of the year of 1995 and the 15th week. So this is period correct. 
and this will be the video card going into my 486 build. What is a 486 DOS gaming build without a proper sound card? I decided to go with the Sound Blaster 16. Check this out. It is a legit Sound Blaster 16 model CT2290. It's a beautiful card. It also has onboard IDE, so I can use that for my CD ROM. And you can check it out there. Creative Labs. Look at that. And let's look for a date code here. We've got, oh, actually, you know, there's a date code somewhere on this board. It's down on the bottom, maybe. There it is. Copyright Creative Technology 1994. So this is the sound card that will be going in my build. Another card going in my machine is the floppy and hard drive controller card. I've got that right here. It's kind of a generic card, a SIG incorporated. This is also period correct. You got the hard drive port here, floppy drive port there, lots of jumpers, parallel serial ports as well. So that will be going in my build. So now let's get some of these cards in and continue on. Two hours later. Sound Blaster card installed down here. Video card here. Floppy hard drive controller here. I'm using the IDE on the Sound Blaster card. It is going up to my CD-ROM drive, which is installed here. I gotta do a little bit of cable management, as you can see, but that will get done here soon. I still need to do a hard drive solution. Almost forgot about that, but down here, let's see if you can get that. Down here, I got all the wires hooked up. And I'm going to do a quick first boot. And I've got a, an NEC VGA monitor there. There's my big thing of screws over there. Needed to dig through that. But yeah, so let me get this ready, adjust some lighting, and we'll boot it up and see what happens on the first boot. I went ahead and grabbed my IBM Model M keyboard. So you see that thing, large and in charge. I've got the computer hooked up to an NEC flat panel monitor. This is not the permanent monitor I'll be using with this machine, but for testing purposes, this is what I'm doing. And let's see what else. Yeah, I don't have a hard drive in the machine as of yet. I do have the CD-ROM drive hooked up, the 1.44 megabyte floppy drive hooked up. So when I power it on, we're basically, hopefully, going to get the post screen, show how much memory, processor, BIOS, that kind of stuff. But before I hit the power button, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These are the folks that support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. And now, without any further ado, let's hit the power button and see what happens. Standing back in case there's fire smoke hear the memory all right that's a good sign 16 megs of ram see the video card okay we've got the 486 dx2 at 66 megahertz we got 256 kb of cache memory and we are getting the drive not ready error insert boot disk in drive a i do not have a boot disk handy but for giggles let's go ahead and hit the space bar and nothing's going to happen so let's go ahead and move the keyboard and show you the front of the case and discuss hard drive solutions. Here is the front of my machine. You can see the CD-ROM drive is installed. The floppy drive is installed. Still got a hole here in the other three and a half inch bay, but I got a plan for that. We'll talk about in a minute. Still need to put a badge here. We're going to be taking care of that in a minute. Right here where the segmented display is and the turbo reset buttons and key lock, there is the plastic protective uh, sticker on here from brand new. So we're going to be peeling that off here in a moment. I know a lot of people like to see videos on that. So we're going to peel it off. We are going to attach the badge and then we're going to stick a hard drive solution in here really quick. All right, we got the camera up close. I'm going to peel off the plastic. So I already got it kind of started here. Here it goes. Look at that. And it is 
off. There it is. All right, we have pulled that off and look at how shiny that is. The segmented display will look really great. We'll show you that in a moment, but first we're gonna put the badge on. Here are the four badges that I ordered from Geek and Spiel. Great company, they do reproduction badges, stickers, etc., for your machines. I'll drop a link down in my description so you can check it out. But these are the four that I picked, 486, Intel with kind of a 90s color scheme, a black and white 486, Hack the Planet, and because I'm a Tron fan, Encom badge. But for this build, because it's a 486 and it's hashtag 486 build off, we are going to go with this one here because I like the 90s color. And it says 46 and it's an Intel processor. So let me peel off the backing and we'll get that attached to the case. All right, I've got the backing pulled off. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and stick it on the case. I only get one shot at this, so hopefully uh, I get it on straight. Look at that. That is freaking awesome. Look at that. That is awesome. Let's back up here a little bit. Tilt up. Look at that. That is beautiful. All right. Let's now put in the hard drive solution and uh, get this video wrapped up. So what I'm going to do for my hard drive solution temporarily is I'm going to use this Compact Flash IDE hard drive adapter. So I just uh, mount that in the case, plug in the IDE cable, power cable, put in a Compact Flash card, which I've got one already prepped that I use for testing purposes. I have that right here. It is a 64 megabyte Compact Flash with DOS 622 and a couple of games and some other stuff so we are going to get that installed in the machine and do a quick boot up and wrap up the video quick little handheld mode here we have got the ide cable plugged into my controller card and it is going into here well down in there got the power hooked up on the back of the machine you will see the cf card sticking out right there so now we're going to go ahead and turn it on and boot up the machine and show you the beautiful segmented display as well. Here we go for the first full power on of my machine with the CD-ROM installed, the 1.44 floppy installed. We're going to get to see the segmented display lit up. We've got the badge and I've got DOS 622 loaded on the compact flash. I've also got Phil's Computer Labs MS DOS starter kit. Pretty cool little menuing system. I will have that down uh, link in the description for that. Full disclosure, I have not installed the Sound Blaster sound drivers yet, so we're not going to have any sound, but I do have Doom on the Compact Flash, so we will load that up and you will get to see that run. And I will also switch between 66 megahertz as well as 33 megahertz, so you can see how much of an improvement it makes having that faster processor. All right, let's go ahead and hit the power button. Look at that. That 66 looks so great. Machine's booting up. 16 megabyte of memory. 256 KB cache memory. There is Phil's Computer Lab MS-DOS starter kit menu I was telling you about. Got some options there for mouse, CD-ROM, and different memory things for different games. It will time out. It will load the CD-ROM driver, the mouse driver, etc. We're now at the C prompt. Let's go ahead and type ver for version. We already know it is DOS 622, but just to show you that. <clears throat> mem for memory. There's all the memory stuff. And let's go ahead and switch to the Doom folder. Type Doom. It's going to load that up really quick here in real time. There it goes. And wait for it. Boom. There is Doom. Yes, it can run Doom. Here it is running for you. Right now it is in 66 megahertz mode. You can see it's nice and smooth. Let's put it in 33 megahertz. Look at how choppy that is. It's just chunk, 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 chugging along. Go back to 66 and it's nice and smooth. All right. Success. 
Thank you for watching my hashtag 486 build off video. You will be seeing this machine again in future videos because there's still some things I need to do. Get the sound blaster hooked up, you know, with the drivers and everything. I need to figure out something here. I've got some friends of the channel that are going to be sending me some slot covers uh, to see if any of those fit. Worst case, what I'm thinking is doing a 3D printed uh, bracket here to where I could put the compact flash hard drive right there to where I could easily get to it instead of having to reach to the back. But yeah, so there you go. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, thumbs up would be great. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you in the next video.